Good afternoon everyone, I'm Harry and this is Seong and today we will be presenting our group master plan Culture City that focuses on urban design and the interweaving systems of live, work, play and mobility located at Pai Laba for the revitalization of cultural heritage while fostering a new circular economy to boost economic growth. Based on the site's historic studies, the presence of rich cultural cultivation practices played an immense part of the residents' lifestyle. Apart from generating income, they also provided practices of self-sufficiency to the district. In comparison to present day, there is an emphasis on markets as the site identity, where markets like the Gaylan Sarai market act as an important focal node for both social and economic activities of the community. So identifying the traits of both the past and the present, our master plan scheme aims to revive the traditional cultivation traits in order to establish a new microeconomy into the site that can generate revenue as well as a level of self-sustainability from locally sourced goods, generating a more resilient and independent community. So how we are going to achieve this is through the integration of traditional trades and modern R&D technology, with a new production line of creating cultural artifacts and gastronomy to create value-added heritage products such as these Malay sandals, 3D printed using coconut husk filament. So the overarching uh, concept of the circular economy talks about the sharing practices between the sharing of cultivation, uh, repurpose, reuse, collective recycling, cul sharing culinary, sharing of goods and sharing of knowledge across multi-generations. So this system diagram actually explains um, about the two routes. So what you see in purple is actually the route for the artifacts, where we first uh, introduce the agroforest, and uh, through that, the raw materials will be broken down to be made into new cultural products for the site. Uh, and also like the gastronomy routes, where the, where the produce of the agroforest actually becomes like culinary cuisines for the site uh, to actually enhance the cultural value of uh, Paya Labour. So um, the effects of the circular economy actually crux on the phenomena that while the residents are the producers, they are also the consumer for the site and also the neighborhood. So this uh, typology actually allows for the introduction of new jobs such as like local sous chef or like uh, assembly line specialists to add diversity into the local uh, trades uh, such as uh, tradesmen, artisans, housewives and also the gardeners. So a few key um, issues of the existing site is that there's an imbalanced land use where there's a concentration of commercial area at the um, left side of the site and also a white slide at the top where the old factories are all removed so um, it's a clean site. Um, there is also um, greenery in the area that should be addressed and neglected water canals as well as um, poor transportation currently. So taking into the consideration to these current issues of the site, we propose this master plan that achieves this new revitalization of cultural heritage and microeconomy, where there is a new central agroforest and urban farm area located in the center of the site that helps supply the essentials to start up this microeconomy. R&D labs indicated as yellow within the agroforest will, progress, um, will process the goods before they are transported to the markets indicated in red to be used for cuisines or product making. These markets indicated in red will form the central nodes within the intersection of the food and artifact spine, where such goods will be sold along those streets. In our master plan, we have revitalized the water canals where they will serve three main functions. They will first serve as a form of recreation, providing spaces for water activities. Secondly, they will branch off into secondary tributaries within the agroforest, where they will serve as the irrigation for the plantation. And thirdly, these waterway canals will also act as visual wayfinders, guiding people towards the nodes within the site. For our proposed greenery within the site, we have proposed a central agroforest with urban farms that not only serve this purpose of production, but also located in close proximity to residents to serve as a space of recreation. So with this central plantation, we will see this gradual merge within the urban fabric, where the plantation will start to blur the boundaries creating shared spaces. Our vision for 2050 is that autonomous vehicles would be a form of shared infrastructure. The transport routes are designed based on our cultural and commercial spines. So section BB shows about the new living typology introduced, where the terracing community gardens are introduced to residential in the upper level connectivity and uh, the introduction of like maker space at the lower levels and in the middles of the blocks, such that it brings a uh, work near homes. 
the existing Geelong Sarai will then be extended further into the local production and the agroforestry, such that it actually teaches the residents and the visitors on the production line of like raw materials to cultural products. So um, next, I'll talk about the master plan. So for 2030, we actually, um, the residential po uh, population will actually uh, increase to 36,000, with a population of 112,000 people. So the existing URA plot that you can see at the white, um, white parcel land will actually be removed and the introduction of agroforestry will be uh, introduced for plantation and urban farming. Then the existing uh, central area of the HDBs will actually be relocated. So that it can allow for a clear thoroughfare for the cultural spine to go through for the cultural spatial programs. And the underutilized officers will be combined with the uh, officers at the sites and the mall such that it actually uh, doubles up the effectiveness of the area. And also lastly, the Changi Road, which is currently a single road, will be closed uh, such that it introduce, uh, will be closed at the bottom so that they introduce a two-way lane at the top of the Sims Drive. Next, 2040. 2014, uh, the projection of the residential population increased to 41,000, with 30% increase on the workforce. So, uh, two-way traffic of the Sims Road at the top will be sunken downwards so that it allows for a free, uh, per fully pedestrianised road. Um, and also, it allows for the car parks to be set at the peripheral of the site such that they park at the outside and then they use uh, like other modes such as AV and cyclists and uh, walking because it's only one kilometre site to move around the site. Then uh, on top of that, uh, the bottom side at the blue, uh, the food street will be introduced. And also new typology of the HDB that will tear us down into the agroforest space will be introduced as well. Next. So by 2050, um, there will be an increase of population to 50,000 and the working population will be 155,000. So the whole network will be fully pedestrianized and um, local production series in the middle like the agrofor agroforestry will works as a series of galleries such that the residents and visitors will be immersed in the entire experience uh, with a set, uh, cultural immersive at the site and also um, com that houses the central community kitchen and the community maker space and rewilding will be introduced as form of recreation for the site. Yeah. So next we'll talk about our yes, so these are the urban interventions located at micro scale. So these will be the agroforest pavilions located in agroforest where residents or the visitors can go up to these um, pavilions to actually um, intimately and physically um, harvest the goods and take it to the um, cultural immersion center. Yep. Yeah, next, this is the uh, residential typology that we talk about, the terracing of the community space. Next, the local production where you so uh, have different processes of the sorting. Next. Um, this is the cultural immersion center where the people would take the goods from the agroforest and take it here to create their artifacts or their cuisines. And this is the food street, the food street that will be introduced using the Malay house typology and the fully pedestrian, the next slide, and the fully pedestrianized uh, uh, path that actually uses AV and is uh, makes use across like cyclists and uh, AVs and pedestrians such that there's an uh, informal way of using the site itself. Yeah, and now we'll share so a fly through.
So that concludes the presentation from last week. I'm actually voice recording over a few of the segments because the microphone on the day of the presentation didn't actually um, work very well. So I just overlaid a voice over on top of the presentation. But we actually um, won the Viewer's Choice Award. So thanks for everyone who actually voted for us on the Zoom meeting that day. Um, thanks for the support and getting us that award. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this presentation and learn something from it. It was a bit of a creative and imaginative scenario for a master plan. Um, but yeah, it was fun kind of um, expanding into this field as we never actually tapped into urban design for architecture, um, um, our degree at NUS. So it was interesting and it's definitely a great skill to have in your architecture degree. Yeah, so thanks to everyone for watching this. See you guys next time.